Hey everybody, Mike here. So about a week ago, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on a set of temperature sensors for my freezers here on the farm. These are made by Macrio. This is the hub that come with two ST5 sensors, and then I picked up an additional sensor as well. I've got a third freezer on the way. I've got two in here right now set up, and I've got a third one coming in a few days here. I've had these two set up here for the last five days. I had a chance to kind of monitor data and see how this system works. So I wanted to take a second to go over this with you, show you my initial thoughts on this and what I think. That way, if you're looking into getting a system like this as well, you can kind of know what to do. First thing we'll do here, I'll take the sensor out of the box to give you an idea what the sensor looks like. All three sensors come with the sensor itself. So you get your little sensor here and on your sensor, you've got a spot to plug in your temperature probe. This little door houses the reset and program switch, which you use a little pin to, to do. And then you get your charge port here next to that. This is capable of running for up to almost two years be between charges. So you don't have to worry about charging this thing all the time. And inside the app, it'll show you the battery life. So you'll know when you're getting close and need to charge your sensors back up again. It does come with a little USB charge cord. And then this little bag here is your temperature probe. Now your temperature probe is roughly five foot long. So it gives you quite a bit of cord to work with depending on where you want to put your probe at. And then this little suction cup dude here, slide in like so. And you're supposed to be able to suction cup that to the side of your fridge. I haven't had great luck with the suction cup yet. I do have it on there just for the heck of it. Just keep that in mind. Maybe I'm having bad luck with that and you might have better luck. But for me, the suction cup kind of useless. And then you get a little piece of Velcro here to not only tie up the extra cord you've got, but to Velcro the sensor on the side of your freezer as well. And then a little instruction manual. Now real quick, let me grab my iPad here. I haven't set this sensor up yet, so we can do that together real fast. And then I can show you the graph of the other two sensors since they've been running for a little bit here. So let me go into the Macrio app. Now as you can see here, I've got two freezers set up. I've got the Frigidaire and the Kenmore that are in here running right now. So you can click on the Frigidaire or, or either one. It brings up a graph. And if you click on view more, you can view it by day, by month, or by year. So since we just started December, I got to go back to November. If I pull up November, where the big spike is, that's where I initially put the sensor in the freezer. And then it came down to temperature. And then pretty much lives in that negative three, negative two range, but you can kind of see where the where the freezer actually cycles off and on as well. The sensor is supposed to be plus or minus 0 0.9 degrees in accuracy, which for me isn't a big deal. Let me show you something else here. So if you go into the alerts, this is where you can set up your push notifications to have it email you and alert you as well. So then if you go back into the freezer sensor and you click on the wheel, these are all the parameters that you could set. So you can see where it says temp alerting, you could turn that on. You could set yourself a minimum maximum and then how long you want that to delay before it alerts you. So for me, I've got it set up between negative 15 and positive 15 degrees Fahrenheit for now and I've got it on a two minute delay just to kind of allow for a fluke that might happen where the sensor stops reporting for a second uh, that way I'm not getting false readings while I'm gone and freaking out and then you can also export your historical data as well if you choose to do so so and then up at the top here you can name your sensor so like with my case I've got three freezers total that I'm going to have on this for now so I've got them named by what brand they are and my new one will be a Frigidaire as well so I'll have to name it something a little bit different to be able to tell the two apart and then you can see what, what level the signal is running at now the hub is in the same room with me as these freezers so you can see the signal level within the same room is still pretty good and then it shows you the battery level like I said earlier as well and then you're also able to turn the beeping on the hub off if you need to but that hub produces like a 90 decibel sound when it goes off it's pretty loud to be honest I'll show I'll throw that on the screen here as well for you to hear now let's go ahead and set up another sensor here real quick I'll hit the plus sign here and then I'll select ST5 sensor. And I want to mate it to this hub. Now it's asking me to hit that little button in there. Open that little door like I said a minute ago. Poke that little button there. You can see on the screen, it sees the sensor now. So you hit the check mark on that box. I got a blue light flashing on the bottom of this now. And then hit add. Plug in my sensor. And it's all set up and good. Now you can see my new sensor up here added in the gray. And it just went on. So it should start registering temperature here soon. And if I go in, I'll set the name on this to Frigidaire as well. So I'm going to put in parentheses big. And that's how I'll tell the two apart for now because it's a lot bigger freezer than the one I've got here currently. And I'm not going to set up temp alerting until I get the freezer here. That way I'm not getting alerts this whole time until the, you know, because if I set this to negative 15 or 15 degrees now, it's never going to reach that. It, it's going to basically be at room temperature for the time being. So I'll hit save. And now you can see I've got the three freezers set up here. This one's registering 57 degrees right now. So it'll stay at ambient temperature until I get the new freezer in here. But that's how you set up a, a sensor. The hub itself is what you see sitting right here on the wall. I've got it kind of hanging down. It's kind of hard to see. It'll light up pr that purple color when it's working correctly, like you see there. And I've got mine running off hardwired. I did have a little bit of trouble setting that up when I first got going. That was, that was the frustrating part for me. Once I got it going though, uh, it's been working flawlessly ever since. So I'll go ahead and tuck that back up behind the TV here. Now when it comes to the sensors, as you can see, I just got it Velcroed on the side of my freezer here. And then I just group my cord up like this on the back. It's got a nice flat cord, so you can run it right in through the seal of your freezer. And it doesn't have any issues with pitching the cord or whatnot. And it doesn't compromise the seal either. 
and then it just runs right down in here like you see inside my freezer there and these things have been working flawlessly for the last week or so now so far i've been really impressed with these micro sensors uh, it's only been a week like i said so i can't speak to longevity on how long they'll last for so i've been checking these graphs every day to see what my temperatures look like and whatnot it seems to be extremely steady i could kind of tell where my temperature spikes are where the compressor kicks on and off for the freezers and then i did test the sensor the other day pulled it out of the freezer just to make sure that the war the warnings do come on when they're supposed to everything works as it's designed to so i'm really happy with this system so far if you're in the market looking for freezer temp setup for your freezers or if you want to use this on like a hot tub or another scenario the sky is kind of the limit you can use these sensors anywhere 